Hello, welcome to today's class. Today we will be talking about the agroecological regions. In the last class, we have already talked about what are the agroclimatic regions and the agricultural regions. So let's first understand what is the difference between the agroecological region and the agroclimatic region. As said previously, in the agroclimatic region, we were mainly concerned with the climatic characteristics of the region and determining the quality of the crop or the uh, cultivation that occurs on the piece of land. Under agroecological region, our main concern is what we do is we see superimpose two maps. One is the map of soil, another is the map of bioclimate. Okay. So what we do is we superimpose these two maps and the resultant region, which can we can demarcate by means of GIS or other techniques would be the region of agroecological uh, which would that would be the region based on agroecological climate now what do we include under bioclimate under bioclimate we include few basic characteristics first is the climatic conditions that is for sure the second is lgp that is the length of growing period that means what is the growing period of an average crop in that region and lastly is the potential evapotranspiration rate. So what is potential evapotranspiration is the amount of evaporation that occurs when there is uh, um, uh, enough amount of water that is available to the soil or the crop. So that is what is potential evapotranspiration. So based on three these three characteristics, we define the bioclimate and that bioclimatic map is superimposed with the soil map and the resultant map would be a kind of agroecological map or where we can say that this region is divided on these agroecological basis. So there is around 20, uh, 20 macro agroecological regions that have been demarcated and 60 sub-regions that have been demarcated based on this finding. Now let's first start the first region so this is the first region this is known as the western himalayan region okay under the western himalayan region we have it's kind of cold climate okay so the climate is cold it's mountainous terrain the net geographical area for cultivation is very less because it's a highly mountainous region with we have only 4.7% of the total area which is under cultivation. The rainfall is decently good. The potential evapotranspiration is not that good because you do not have uh, enough water resources which are available throughout the year. And the length of growing period for average crop here is very less. So it's mainly fruit cultivation that occurs. Seasonal vegetables that grow in this region and besides that, the other uh, crops are wheat, barley, and stuff like that. The next region is the Western Plains or the Kutch Peninsula that includes southern Guj uh, east, Western Gujarat, Western Rajasthan, and Southern Haryana. Okay, this is a kind of hot, arid region. Predominated predominantly has Thar Desert in this region. So the soil is basically saline in nature. The evapotranspiration rate obviously is very high due to high temperature here. The length of growing period is very small in this region. So the major crops are only millets uh, and fodder for uh, poultry. The next region is the Deccan region, which is marked by three. Uh, so you have this region, which is the Deccan plateau region. This region is again a region which is rich in black soil and red soil as we mentioned in the agroclimatic classification also. The cultivation or the crop area is not much in this region. The main crop, since it is a black soil, the main crops here are cotton, sunflower, sorghum. Uh, you have sugarcane and groundnut growing in this region. The next region or the region 4 is the northern plains and the central highlands. It has huge proportion of crop area, around 10% of the gross crop area is found in this, re, 
uh, you have the total geographical area you have around 10% and around 30 uh, million hectares of the gross cropped area is in this region so this region has ample of cultivation the major crops here are again wheat and rice wheat and pulses sorry uh, you have also sugarcane in the southern belt uh, on this side okay then you have the next region which is the malwa highland and the gujarat plains lying in the region of southern gujarat and western madhya pradesh uh, you also have the kathiawar region which is included in this this region is basically owing uh, to a kind of semi arid uh, soil semi arid climatic conditions and kind of black soil in this region the main crops again are millets and pulses here the evapotranspiration rate is very high okay and the length of growing period is around half of the year so half of the year you have nearly crops in this region so the next year is the deccan plateau region or the region marked as states okay this region has again semi arid uh, kind of climate the evapotranspiration rate is high the major crops are again since it's a black soil you have cotton and pulses with sugarcane in southern maharashtra region here the next region is the telangana region now a part of the telangana state only so you have black and red soil here around half of the year you have crops in this region so all this region you have the deccan plateau the eastern ghats all this region have uh, crops for nearly half of the season okay the major crops again are oil seeds and rice and sugar cane here the next region is the eastern ghats or the region 8 that we can see on the map so this region is basically the tamil nadu uplands and you have parts of karnataka which which are an extension of deccan okay uh, the soil here is red and loamy so since it is a loamy soil uh, the cross cropped area is not much half of the year you have crops on the soil rice is a predominantly major crop here and the main uh, mainly grows with irrigation facilities in this region the next region is the nadal plains so you have this whole belt of ganga yamuna region that forms the nadal belt or the nadal plains the soil is alluvial and since the soil is alluvium in nature it is highly fertile you have very um, high, uh, high evapotranspiration rate and a very good growing season with around 180 days of um, growing period the major uh, the major vegetation here is wheat peanut and maize the next region we would be talking about is the central highland this includes the region of malwa and bundelkhand plateau uh, basically forming chatisgarh and eastern madhya pradesh this region is again rich in black and red soil as we mentioned previously sorghum and soybean are the main crops here and it has a decently good growing season with around half of the year as the length of growing period the next is the eastern plateau that forms the region of chatisgarh that is marked as 11 here this region is predominantly rich in minerals uh, with vegetation we say it has kind of yellow soil so it is decently good for vegetation not very good so the main crops here are coarse grains and the coarse grains includes millets whole grams you have uh, black grams green grams so it's kind of coarse vegetation that grows in this region the next re region is the eastern plains which is marked as 12 here this region has rich alluvial soils Be being a region of alluvial rich soil it is highly fertile rice pulses are the main crops and again jute cultivation uh, works as a plantation crop in this region in the, uh, south of uh, west bengal then you have odisha and northern andhra pradesh region form this region the next region is the western himalayan region marked as 14 this western himalayan region is a kind of pre humid region with forest soils so cultivation is not 
too good. The gross cropped area is very less. Uh, the predominant crops here are maize and millet. Let's move forward. You have the northeastern states, which is marked as 15. These northeastern states, as we can see, have ecological uh, soil which are red and laterite in nature. So this 15 is the northeast region with laterite soils. You have the Bengal Basin and Assam Plains here. The growing season is more than 210 days. Rice, millets, potatoes is the main crop. This region again has uh, shifting cultivation. Uh, as a result, you have uh, farm source that are shifting from one region to another. The next region is the Eastern Himalayas, the region marked as 16, rich in red and alluvial soil. Due to heavy rainfall, this region is very rich in tapioca and spices. Uh, the length of growing period again is more than 210 days with high rainfall in this region. The next region is the Northeast Hill Estates, which includes the uh, Tripura, Manipur, Nagaland region. This again has a huge uh, rainfall, high range of length of growing period, and the evapotranspiration rate is around 1400 to 1600 in this region. Then you have the Eastern Coastal Plain. You have the Western Ghats. Both these coastal areas have rainfall more than 250 centimeters a year. This region is rich in crops, which are uh, kind of plantation crops like coconut. Okay. On the eastern coast, you have plantation crops like jute. Besides that, rice is a staple crop in this region. Uh, since it is a hot and humid region, again, the major soil due to huge rainfall here is kind of alluvial soil, which is good in fertility. As a result, the gross cropped area, uh, the total area under uh, crop is good. And finally, you have the island regions of Andaman and Nicobar and Lakshdi. These regions have a kind of loamy and sandy soil, uh, huge salinity in this region as they are amidst the ocean. Due to huge salinity, the soil is not uh, adequate for a lot of crops. So the only crops here that grow are coconut, you have oil palm trees that you can widely see there. Uh, but since this is a region of high rainfall, the average length of growing period here is more, more than 210 days, which is a kind of huge range. So as we can see here, now let's try to generalize this map. As we can see, all the regions which are coastal, okay, the island region, let me just change the color so that you can see it better. So you have the coastal region here, the island region and the northeast region have huge rainfall. As a result, the length of growing period is good. You have crops for nearly three fourths of the year. Okay, the evapotranspiration rate in the central belt is much higher as compared to the remaining country and the gross crop area and the cultivation in this region is maximum. That's the 14 to 4, that's the Kutch and the Western Plateau, the Northern uh, Plains and the Malwa region, you have the highest crop cultivation here. So this is how we define the agroecological regions of India. As we can see, the agroecological regions differ from the agroclimatic region where the only emphasis was climate. Under agroecological regions, our emphasis is the bioclimate, that is the length of growing period, potential evapotranspiration in the region, and along with the soil map. When we superimpose all these three on the GIS platform, we can see that the regions that come up are called as the agroecological regions. So stay tuned for more lessons on geography of India. Have a good day ahead.